I can still remember my U.S. history class in high school. Now, I was a terrible student in those days, and I can recall with nauseating clarity an exam question which asked, in what year was the Treaty of Paris signed? And then the dreaded multiple choice. And I had no idea what year that treaty was signed. It very well could have been 1985 as far as I knew. And I remember staring at those four dates trying to shock my brain into remembering something, like anything that might help me eliminate at least one or two options. Truth be told, I'm getting a little sweaty just thinking about it. Anyway, that is where my memory stops. I don't recall what answer I registered and I have no idea whether I got it right or wrong. But the point is, that is not the kind of test question we want to give to our students. Like in our AP history classes, we're not interested in the bare recall of facts. We're interested in helping our students learn to think like historians. We want them to be able to interpret documents and source for point of view or construct arguments with evidence. And so if you're anything like me, you don't emphasize specific dates unless they're explicitly mentioned in the CED. And whenever students ask me whether they need to know dates for their exam, I always always say, no, you need to learn how to think like a historian. But when I say no to that question, I realize what I'm really saying no to is knowing dates for the kind of exam that I had in high school. No, you're never going to be asked in what year Constantinople fell to the Muslims. You just need to know that it fell and what caused it to fall and what the effects of the fall were. But I'm starting to rethink that after an email I recently got from a teacher who said this. I just had a quick question for you. When my students come back from the AP exam, I always ask them any advice for next year. Many said that they would like to have known dates only in order to put things in order. That's when it hit me that knowing dates is essential if the students are going to learn to think historically. This is one of those situations where the dates and chronology of events have become so firmly baked into my own brain that they're now a given, and I forget what it was like not to have known them. And so yes, knowing the dates of events is crucial to succeeding in our history classes, and let me explain how that might look in a classroom. At the very minimum, students need to understand in what order events happened, even if they don't have the specific dates. For example, they have to know that the War of 1812 preceded the era of good feelings, or they have to know that the Spanish Reconquista preceded Spanish exploration, etc. Both of those prior events were causative factors in the latter events, and if they're writing or doing multiple choice, they need to know at the minimum which preceded which so that they can actually demonstrate their historical thinking. Furthermore, it is exceedingly helpful for them to know the dates that frame the time periods in the curriculum and what those dates stand for. AP Euro students need to know that 1450 represents the beginning of the Renaissance and that 1648 is the Peace of Westphalia. AP World students need to know that 14 1950 represents the beginning of European exploration, and that 1750 represents the beginning of industrialization. A-push students need to understand that 1491 represents pre-Columbian America, and that 1607 is the founding of Jamestown. At the beginning of every unit, I would take time in class to make sure they know what these framing dates stand for, because as you know, these are the dates that are often going to show up in their writing prompts, and in order to write a coherent essay, they need to know what events are framing that period. Because look, if you've ever been a reader at the national exam, or you've ever read a student essay in your class, you know that probably the most frequent reason students miss points is because they cite evidence that comes outside the time period in question. So to me, the most practical way to get these dates into students' brain folds is to require them to make timelines for each unit. Now on that timeline, not every event has to have a date assigned to it, but the more they can see the order of things, the more confident they're going to feel about demonstrating causation or change over time or contextualization. And I would start now if you haven't already. This is an all year long project that can't really be crammed in at the end of the year. And by the way, right here is a video that I made for students telling them exactly which dates they need to know for all the courses, and there's a link to documents that I created for each course explaining the must-know dates that are mentioned in the CED. Anyway, one thing I've found helpful in this regard is to have chronological quizzes. Not date quizzes, but chronological quizzes. And these are pretty easy to construct. You have five to ten questions, and each of them deal with three or four events, and they just have to tell me which letter is the right order. Now, to me, yeah, that still may make them sweaty, but it's a lot more concrete than having to produce the exact year in which the Treaty of Paris was signed. Okay, right here's that video on dates that I mentioned. You might want to watch that next and possibly send it to your students. And if you need more help in your classroom, I've got video note guides and classroom activities all at the link in the description. Hey, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.